The seaplane strike force concept was never fully implemented. Uncertainty was growing regarding the flying boat's role in future military operations. Convair's XF2Y, more commonly remembered as the Sea Dart, was a radical departure from previous flying boat design and function. The Sea Dart was a jet fighter interceptor, able to perform its duties from the water. Powered by twin jet engines, this delta wing aircraft was a true flying boat, although it required hydro skis for takeoff and landing. When taxiing, its hull rested in the water. The first of the sea darts was launched in December 1952. The plane's performance was equal to that of many land-based fighters, validating its singular design. During a test flight in August 1954, the XF-2Y became the first and only flying boat to break the sound barrier. Just three months after this achievement, in another test flight, one sea dart exploded, killing the pilot. The ambitious XF-2Y program never progressed past the test phase. Of 19 originally ordered, a total of just five sea darts were built before the project was discontinued in 1956. The sea dart concept was seen to be redundant in the age of aircraft carriers and the future of flying boat development was increasingly uncertain. In October 1952, the US Navy awarded the Martin Company a contract to build a much larger jet, the P-6M Seamaster. First flown in July 1955, the Seamaster could be serviced and armed while in the water, allowing much quicker and more convenient operation. Tragically, a serious design flaw in the mechanism controlling the elevator surfaces caused the first two experimental planes to crash. However, data indicated much promise for the overall design, and six more test aircraft were constructed. intended as a high-speed, low-altitude mine layer, the P-6M soon displayed its potential as a long-range bomber. But Navy officials downplayed this capability. They wished to avoid increasing inter-service tension with the Air Force, which insisted on its own exclusive control over long-range bombing operations. As a possible competitor to the B-47 and B-52, the Seamaster could be seen as a threat to the Air Force's monopoly in this area. The great expense of the Seamaster program caused further doubts as to its feasibility. Three of the 24 production models ordered were built by August 1959, when the project was cancelled. The Navy feared that pushing to continue production of the Seamaster would result in cutbacks on other projects. Navy officials chose to invest their funds in the submarine-launched ballistic missile program instead. The end of the Seamaster project signaled the end of American flying boat development. Long-range, land-based planes, aircraft carriers and Polaris submarines capable of launching missiles had made these aircraft redundant. Even such an advanced design as the Seamaster. The P-5M Marlins continued flying patrols far out to sea in both the Pacific and Atlantic hunting Soviet submarines. The last P-5M was built late in 1960, and their final missions in a combat area were the market time patrols along the south coast of Vietnam, intercepting supplies being brought to the Viet Cong on small boats. The last of these missions 
took place in April 1967. On November the 6th, 1967, the last P5M2 of the only remaining Navy Flying Boat Squadron was removed from service. The two remaining Mars planes continue flying over Canadian forests today, uniquely suited to their task of firefighting. They are among the last survivors of a remarkable breed. Their glory days have long passed, but while they still fly, these aircraft will serve as a reminder of the exceptional legacy of the flying boat.